Page uh, 61 of the Mail on Sunday. Kieran, I know you're obviously a passionate uh, boxing fan. It was quite the week for boxing, to say the least. And yeah. It was utterly. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as I know, I, I didn't Nicholas see it. Uh, I, I think I looked through all the papers and I didn't see anything else in any paper on this, which which uh, surprised me because it's, you know, it's been such a, I think it's been a terrible year for boxing across the board. You know, when you tie in the Daniel Kinahan situation, uh, the sanctions that were brought against him, and, you know, and the relationships within boxing that were highlighted before and subsequently. Uh, when you look at the embrace of Saudi Arabia and far less criticism of boxing doing it than golf is getting, that boxing seems to be given, you know, allowed to get away with this, uh, the Olympic situation, which unless there's something extraordinary happens, boxing has gone for the Olympics after Paris 2024. And what really struck me about the the, the Olympic situation is uh, the lack of reaction. Mm. You know, because like Kelly Harrington's autobiography is coming out on October 27th. And she collaborated with Roddy Doyle on that. And Roddy is a, a Booker Prize winner. And the only person he's ever done a book like this, like a, a ghosted book with before, is Roy Keane. So it shows the kind of national figure Kelly Harrington is, and that's because she's an Olympic champion. But boxing is going for the Olympics, and there's hardly been any reaction. Like, across the media, I've seen very, very little conversation. And it shows how shallow the interest in boxing is and how how marginalised, in a way, is becoming. And, and a story like this just increases it because people who don't know is there, there was supposed to be a big fight last night in London between Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. It was being sold to a large extent on the rivalry between their fathers in the 90s, mm -hmm. which are, you know, they're fights that went, you know, um, iconic, iconic. Yes, yeah, probably a decent word for it. Yeah. But um, Conor Ben, uh, Reith Al Samari of the Daily Mail, a very good journalist. He's been very good in the Kinnan story as well. He was a proper journalist. He he found he revealed. I think it was on Wednesday. Yeah. That um, Conor Ben had failed a drugs test for. Um, if I can remember offhand, I think it's called Clomiphen. Clomiphen. Clomiphen, which is a, a, a fertility drug used by women, but it also uh, increases testosterone levels. So it's, it can be used as a PED. And I'm waiting on the, uh, the B sample, the, the version of the B sample, but it looks like that the authorities knew about this for a number of days before this story was revealed. And the only, there was only a statement from the British Boxing Board of Control two hours after uh, Reith Al Samari uh, published the story and they called for the fight to be pulled. And it raised one, one huge question. Then the promoters, which is Eddie Hearn and the Wasserman Group, they tried to go ahead. They wanted the fight to still go ahead. Yeah. And Eubank was saying, and if you look at doping, Doping is more dangerous in, in, in boxing than virtually all other sports. If you're do running against a sprinter who dopes, you're not putting your life on the line. But if somebody is doped, they could have serious power. And there, 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 are, there are instances of fighters who've gone in against doped fighters and have got a serious beating. And, you know, it's, it, you know fighters have lost their lives or had life-changing injuries because of what's happened in the ring. So you couldn't... You know, the willingness to allow dopers into the ring is scary. And eventually the, the pressure came on and the fight was pulled. And there was a lot of um, financial pressures to go ahead with the fight. Because, you know, TV deals, have been, you know, de broadcast deals have been signed. A lot of tickets have been sold. Uh, so I could see the pressure on the promoters to go ahead. But you couldn't go ahead with it. You know, the boxers on the undercard will really suffer for this because they would have paid for their training camp and they'll end up not getting any fee out of this. But this story in the mail by Edmund Wilson finds that uh, Eddie Hearn, and I have no reason to, I, I would say Eddie Hearn's company is pretty representative, that this would be the case with other promoters, but that he's found that a study by the Mail on Sunday has found 30% of all main event fights staged by Eddie Hearn this year involved at least one fighter who has failed a dope test or been sanctioned for an anti-doping offence. And just as an example, on the undercard of Anthony Joshua's rematch with Andy Ruse Jr. in Saudi Arabia in 2019, five boxers on the undercard had tested positive for doping.
during their careers. This wasn't a testing careers, yeah. in advance of that yeah. fight, but during their during careers. During their careers. Yeah. And, you know, as, as is pointed out here, you know, not all um, uh, Hearn and Matchroom don't represent all the fighters on the cards they promote, you know, so as not to point the figures at Eddie Hearn, but it just points out how widespread doping is how often, uh, because of the, you know, this is something that came up with the Kinnan situation, the lack of governance within boxing, that there's no proper international governing body. So you can be banned by one sanctioning body, but you can fight elsewhere. Yeah. You know, there was one boxer, uh, his name escapes me, who wasn't allowed to fight in the US, but he was fighting in Europe and UK, and he was, he would test positive yeah. for pretty serious PEDs. For, for, for me, it's good that the piece in the paper I, I don't think making it about Eddie Hearn is the right yeah, point yeah. because Eddie Hearn represents so many fighters that of course if boxing has a problem then some of his fights are going to have problems it's a boxing wide problem it's not an Eddie Hearn problem although his behaviour this week was nothing short of reprehensible Yeah. and I mean there's still so many questions as you said what was going to happen before that male story was published and we're told that this sample was um, the results were in by September 23rd yeah and it may even have been taken before that, late August, some people have claimed. And the B sample was never tested. Yeah. Therefore, that gave wiggle room to say, well, look, due process and the B sample hasn't been tested yet. Now, in 99% of cases, the B sample validates the A sample. But also, it shouldn't take very long to test the B sample if you tested the A sample. Yeah, yeah. Why had they still not tested the, a, the B no, sample and There's, a, by there's October? a couple of really important questions. One of them is, Joe, uh, if Riyadh al-Samari hadn't got wind of this test and published this story, yeah. would the fight have gone ahead? Well, this and is, this the is one speech. that comes yeah. off the, that's related to that is, has this ever happened before? Because you would suspect now the way this operated, uh, because this only came out because of a leak, yeah. that there have been fighters who tested positive before and the fights have been allowed to go ahead. You know, there's a lot of reason to suspect that's the case. Yeah. Well, the, the other um, point to make as well, and, and it just expose further what everyone suspected, which is that vested interests wanted to ride roughshod overall um, right thinking, including Eddie Hearn. So Eddie Hearn's talking all week about, look, B. Samuel has been tested. He's passed every other test. He's entitled to process. This was only a VADA one. He's passed all the UCAD one, all that kind of stuff. And then what quickly came out, and it's quoted here in the Edmund uh, Willison piece in the mail. You may have seen or heard the clip, but Eddie Hearn was on the other side of this kind of a scenario when one of his fighters was against Billy Joe Saunders. And again, he'd failed a drugs test in the lead up to the bout. And this was voluntary testing as well. And Eddie Hearn back in 2018 is literally saying, what's the point in signing up for drugs testing if when you fail, everyone just goes, oh, don't worry about it. Let's just let him fight. You can't ignore it. Otherwise, the sport's a mockery. Yeah, yeah. Fast forward four years. Like the, it just shows this general sense, I think, that boxing has, whereby they think, look, no I think no, I think no, I genuinely no one, think boxing is no in big trouble because of this embrace of lawlessness and the way people use that's boxing to explain away everything. Yeah, so but they're right had, though. Sorry, they're right. Yeah, yeah. No one so cares. Many people, so everyone, many people, people. Everyone would have watched this fight. In fact, more people watched this would have watched this fight. And I heard Steve Bunce on yeah. Five Live, who was not condoning what had happened, no. but he was on Five Live in a radio discussion on Thursday night saying, "Look, Ben needs to go away and." if he needs service time, service time, whatever. But, he said, when this fight eventually happens, yeah, yeah. it'll be bigger because of this. Yeah, now, yeah. he wasn't saying that's a great thing, but he was stating that is the reality yeah, of the but marketplace. But I think that's a problem with the boxing media well, generally, and Steve Bunce, you know, is a prominent figure within it, the boxing media generally, that they are allowing, a lot of them are allowing this kind of stuff to go by and just say that's boxing and we don't... But is you know, it boxing a... or entertainment? Because I think that's it's entertainment and yeah. it's like the WWF. I don't yeah. care what happens, but it's entertaining and I did watch too much of it when I was a kid well, well, because it was entertainment. So has, has boxing moved from the realm of sport to just entertainment? Hmm. What's, what's, your, what's your senses? Because I know you're yeah, very yeah. passionate about this. Sorry, yeah, yeah, bring no, Sarah sorry, in a little sorry, bit. Sorry, yeah. 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 What, what's your sense as a, the casual floating voter who may watch some fights and not others? It's entertainment. Yeah. And, and it's the stories around it that will draw me in as opposed to the sport or the spectacle of the boxing. I don't enjoy watching the hits and I don't enjoy watching the, the physicality and the violence of it because I, I do find it violent. Mm. But in the lead up to it, if, if a story or a boxer or a couple of boxers capture my imagination, I will I tune in on a Saturday night people, to watch yeah. it. But I, I don't see it as sport just because of, I suppose, the, the fact that the lawlessness is there. And there's so yeah. many things that there's so many things that I can't grasp the reality yeah. of it. Does yeah. that make sense? No, totally. And, and I suspect, 
think of a year's time. So by all accounts, uh, the Eubank camp were consulted here and told, you know, what, what was going on. And I sh we should state that Conor Ben denies taking drugs and absolutely is insistent he'll be vindicated. But the Eubank camp were happy to fight because I guess finance rules there as well. But I guarantee in a year, in the build up to the fight, the Eubank camp will be we're going to take down this drugs cheat. He's a drugs cheat. How dare he do that to me? And that'll be the selling point to try and grab you back in. Good versus evil, yeah. clean versus <laughs> doped, all that kind of stuff. And like, they'll, they'll be rubbing their money, rubbing their hands. Yeah, like, yeah but... On, <laughs> anticipation of rubbing their money. But I saw on, uh, I think it was in balls.ie, Jason Quigley um, was interviewed about this. And Jason said that he was tested far more as an amateur in the Irish setup than he ha has been as a professional. Yeah. Even though... Uh, you know, it's it's far less dangerous to dope as an amateur than a professional. Uh, me or you know, because there's more protections, there's shorter fights, etc. Um, but you know, it has a reckless attitude towards it. And it is a reckless, it is a terrible attitude towards scrutiny of the sport. Like since the Kinnan situation, nothing has been done to address the lack of governance within the sport or to stop another Kinnan emerging. And on Thursday, a, a press conference went ahead. That was scheduled, but the press conference started with an announcement that no questions would be allowed. Yeah. And Eddie Hearn read a prepared statement. And since then, Eddie Hearn did an interview with an online an online outfit called IFL TV, who used to be financed by MTK Global, which glossed over the story. I know the British Boxing Board of Control have been asked for comment on this by various journalists over the last few days and no comment has been forthcoming. So th th there's a huge lack of transparency within boxing. Uh, there's something I, I, I've just been working on and I got a lot of data on this and I was surprised about it because you hear so much about MMA taking over, but worldwide boxing's audience is still miles ahead of uh, 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 MMA if, when I was going through the data. So it's still a hugely popular sport, but it's a sport that uh, I think a lot of people are, st even though it's got a huge audience, I think the fact that there's so little coverage across the papers today shows a lot of people are sick of it and don't want to deal with it anymore. You know, they think that's ju you know, uh, it's just uh, they've zoned out of it. You know, the, because there's just so many bad news stories with it, and the Olympic one summed it up for me that a story that we celebrate so much because of the success it's brought to Ireland that losing an Olympic spot now hardly raises a ripple. That people have, are gone from it. You know, the the. the the yeah. lost interest. I mean, potentially, I, th I think on the Olympic one, people sort of feel, oh, this will get sorted out. And It'll course. be sorted out. I think people have that suspicion. It's 2028, they'll sort it out one way or another. It's yeah. brinkmanship. So maybe, I think if we were at the on the eve of the 2028 Olympics and this, was, this had happened, it would be a much bigger story. And on the second point, I think people do have the perception of boxing that you're talking about, but I think, like, you know fans like Sarah, lots of others, probably myself to an extent, I'm not a boxing aficionado. I think if Fury's fighting Joshua in two months' time, everyone's like, I'll zoom back in for that one on the understanding that this sport is uh, decrepit in so many ways, but it won't stop you watching the big fights. I think that's the reality. It's entertainment on a Saturday night, yeah. you know, and that's, that's why I watched it. Yeah. And like it's, it, it's terrible to say entertainment when it's like one of the greatest sporting tests of any pursuit, you know, it's ridiculous to cast it as that. Yeah. I know, but that's what it has boiled itself down to because yeah. of the, the way that they've taken it. Because I think the only thing that keeps some of us still involved or en with any interest in it is, like you, you would have dealt with Eric Donovan and like Eric, uh, you know, won his EU title two weeks ago. And there's, there are personalities in, in the sport, like Eric, that they're so captivating and decent people, you know, that that keeps you interested. But that's... The vast, no, there are so many people in positions of power around the sport that just but turn actually, you off. But actually, ironically, and you're talking about Eric, I'm watching Hell Week yeah, this yeah. last four weeks, and I know more about Eric now than I ever did right. yeah, because yeah. of the sociability of him yeah, in yeah. the show. Now, I'd love to watch the fight two weeks ago with that body of yeah, content yeah. in my armour, and I'd have enjoyed the 